So let's go over 10 of the most boring baby boomer stocks on the ASX right now. Don't take the title of this video to be too seriously, it's just meant to be some lighthearted fun. Before we get into it, as always, this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. We are speaking in a very general perspective, 10 minutes on the clock, let's get into it. Now the first stock we're going to talk about is Telstra, of course, ASX TLS. Let's have a quick look at the stock price so far. So today it was minus 2.84%, looking at the one year return, it's sitting at around minus 10% and and the five-year return isn't too good either at about minus 40%. They had a recent announcement on the 11th of February where they were speaking about building momentum through their strong mobile performance and their retail postpaid handheld services seem to be doing quite good as well. Hardware sales and international roaming were down due to COVID as expected and they also announced that they will take full ownership of all their brick and mortar stores and take over any stores run by independent licenses. So based on this announcement, they're basically going to take over 250 stores. And the main rationale for this is to allow Telstra more flexibility to respond to customers changing needs. So we'll see how that goes. Next up on the list is West Farmers ASX WES. Quick look at the stock price. It is minus 2.36% at the moment. The one year return is quite decent at about 21%. And five years, we're looking at a return of around 70%, which is quite healthy. Now, in their announcement in February 2018, their revenue from continuing operations was up nearly 17%, which is quite a healthy sign. Now, this figure also includes figures from Kmart and Target, of course. They also increased their sales and online sales penetration was a big driving factor for these two brands because they've got services like click and collect and even same day delivery in some areas. So that's really helping their cause. Officeworks revenue also increased by nearly 24%, which is quite healthy, with once again, online sales growing quite nicely. And this online trend, I believe, is going to keep on growing for Australia, especially because Australia has quite low online e-commerce penetration. But if we look at chemicals, energy and fertilizers, these seem to be down at about minus 6.6%. Next up on this list, we have BHP, of course, ASX BHP. Looking at the returns once again, it's minus 2.6% for the day. One year return seems to be quite good at about 47%. And looking at a five year return, it is about 178%. Now looking at some other high level results from BHP, the profit from operations was up 17%, as you guys can see over here. And when it comes to the company's assessment of the economic outlook, it still remains a bit uncertain at the moment because for the company, the prices for commodities fluctuates because of COVID, but for the long term, BHP does see a positive economic growth and the demand for commodities seems to be quite healthy. Now climate change is a big focus for BHP because at the moment they are looking to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions by 30% by 2030. So we'll see how that turns out. And for the last 24 months, BHP hasn't had any fatalities, which is of course good news. Next up, number four, we have Coca-Cola Amatil, which is ASX CCL. Quick look at the returns. We can see that for the one year return, it is sitting at around 17%. And for the five years, it's looking at about 49%. Looking at the high level announcements, the volume and revenue declined by 8.4% and 6.1% respectively, driven by impacts of COVID-19. No real surprises there. Now, since Coca-Cola Amatil operates in not just Australia, but other countries like Indonesia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, etc. Looking at specifically Indonesia, trading conditions remain challenging due to COVID-19 infection rates and macroeconomic impact. But the performance for CCL in Australia does seem to be improving and the overall brand for Coca-Cola did seem to gain market share, which is quite good as well. Now, number five on this list, we have Origin Energy. The code is ASXORG. Looking at the day return, it's minus 3.64%. Looking at the one year return, it's not that good at about minus 36% due to the impacts from COVID, of course. Looking at the five year return, it is around 12.28% minus. The statutory profit and the underlying profit seems to be down 586 and 304 million respectively, which reflects the current market conditions. And they have a key focus on four areas being the customers, communities, the people and the planet. Now, of course, since looking after the planet is quite a big thing for this company. So the compensation for executives is linked to the emission targets, which means that the values are aligned. And Origin Energy is also looking to start green hydrogen and ammonia initiatives. And and they're also looking to support their own employees and their customers through the COVID-19 period through support initiatives and other measures. And the company is focused on two things. Number one being maximizing the value of the existing businesses. And number two, pursue growth in customer value and low carbon solutions. Number six is Coles, of course, which is ASX COL. Looking at the returns, it was minus 2.29% for the day. 
Looking for the yearly return, it is just positive at about 4.5% and roughly the two year return is about 20%. Now you guys would have definitely heard about the recent nosedive with the results so far. Investors are just not pleased with this company at the moment. Now on their announcement on the 17th of February, we see the exact same trend with the e-commerce sales growing by 61%, which of course leads to better customer satisfaction. And one thing that I found super interesting was that online liquor sales has grown 90%. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> And Coles is looking to digitize the in-store experience for customers and this is quite good because I can really see Coles making use of technology and making their business better. Similarly, Coles is also looking to have more automation projects when it comes to its fulfillment. So that will be interesting to see. And there's also a big focus on removing friction for customers as you guys can see. So this should be quite interesting. Next up, number seven is Woolworths. How could we not have this company when we have Coles? The ticker code is ASX WOW and the day return is minus 1.7%. The yearly return is about 2% and looking at the five year chart, it's somewhere around 73%. Now with their recent announcement on the 24th of February, once again, it's not a surprise, the same e-commerce sales growth of 92% was shown with a sales penetration of 7.7%, which is about $1.8 billion. Now, so you guys can definitely see that this whole trend of e-commerce just keeps on growing. Now Woolworths digital arm, which is called Woolies X, has been doing quite good as well, as you guys can see, with total e-commerce customers increasing by 1.5 million, which is an increase of 74%. And same day delivery also seems to be improving quite a lot with 429 same day delivery stores operating within one hour of delivery. Now on number eight, we have News Corp, which is probably one of the most boomer businesses on this list. Having a quick look at the charts, we can see that the return is minus 1.6% for the day. The one year return is around 51%. And looking at the five year return, it is somewhere around 85%. Now, as you guys might know, News Corp is a huge multinational mass media company. It's headquartered in New York with the founder being Rupert Murdoch, this guy. <laughs> And they own a lot of news platforms like news.com.au, Sky News, The Australian, and a few others. Now in this announcement, we can see that they've recently entered into a three-year agreement with Google, where Google will pay News Corp to support journalism. Now this stuff is already so controversial, so I'm not gonna speak any further, but let me know your thoughts on this whole News Corp versus big tech argument. I would love to know your thoughts. Now next up, number nine, we have Rio Tinto, of course. If we have BHP on this list, we have to have this company on here as well. Well, the ticker code being ASXRIO. Looking at the quick returns, the daily return is minus 1.31%. The one year return is around 47%. And looking at the five year return, it is somewhere around the 185 mark, which is quite phenomenal. And this company has a similar return to BHP, which we discussed earlier. Now, looking at the high level view of the financials, we can see that the sales revenue increased by about 3%, and the underlying EBITDA increased by 13%. Now, similar to BHP story, COVID 19 has caused a lot of challenges when it comes to commodities as expected. And looking at this table, we can see that net debt has decreased quite significantly with the debt being 3.65 billion in 2019, with the debt now being 664 million by 2020, which presents a pretty solid balance sheet. Now, when it comes to climate change, Rio is also looking to decrease its emissions across its various logistical options. And it has quite a comprehensive target by 2030, the same as BHP. Now, last and final number 10 on this list, we have Fish and Pike or healthcare and the ticker code is ASX FPH. Looking at the returns, the daily return is about 1%. Looking at the one year return, it is around 12%, which is quite decent. And the five year return is quite nice as well at about 227%. Now this company is actually based in New Zealand, but they manufacture products and systems for respiratory care and other medical items and sell them worldwide to over 120 countries. So obviously with these figures, you guys can see that this company has done quite well, but why? Well, as you can probably already tell, because of COVID, there was a huge demand for its products. And you guys can see here that three quarters of the company company's operating revenue was made up of hospital products and this led to a massive net profit increase of up to 86 percent well that was it guys hopefully you enjoyed learning about these boomer stocks i feel like nobody our age talks about these stocks so it's good to have a look at them and see how they're doing now if you did enjoy this video please like and subscribe and here are two other videos that you might like as well and i'll see you in the next one bye bye